Uh, we're going to need more tissue samples if we're going to make a positive match. Right, Jim. Oh, Inspector. Yes, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Doctor, but this is urgent. Have you finished your report on the Ballam phone box murders? Yes, and I have to admit this is the most baffling case I've ever come across. In what way? Two of the victims were found buried in Epping Forest. Right. The other four were strangled in an underground car park in Romford. So what's your problem? Why are we calling them the Ballam phone box murders? <laughs> well, I was in a phone box in Ballam when I first heard about them. That's a bit thin, isn't it? You've got to call them something, something with a bit of snap to it. You don't think the papers would be interested in the Romford car park and Epping Forest shallow grave murder inquiry, do you? Yeah, but you might as well call them the having a cup of tea in the canteen murders. That's where I was when I first heard about them. Yeah, Maureen but... over there was getting her car fixed. You're not going to call them the Will Mike or Tina get through the MOT killings. <laughs> all right, all right. So what have you found out? This is Harold Morris. I've examined him thoroughly, and I can say beyond a shadow of a doubt, this man is dead. <laughs> dead? Yes. Of course, there are a few more tests we haven't tried. What? We haven't tried shouting at him. <laughs> Oi, mate, you got the time! <laughs> hey, mate, mate, is there an off licence round here? <laughs> no, he's dead, all right. <laughs> Let's have a look at this one. Who's this? Gerald Young. <laughs> this man has been shot. <laughs> I'll stake my reputation on it. What about a knife in his back? That was just me trying to get the bullet out. <laughs> Mouse! Yeah. Go on, clear off! Right then. <laughs> they drive you around the bend, them people. Always hanging around laboratories looking for part-time work. <laughs> but this is the one we haven't been able to identify. He's got no wallet, no identification, and his clothes could have been bought anywhere. I reckon he's a bus driver. <laughs> so anyway, this builder, remember him, King Stupid, he sees the cat. Now, the builder is a representative of the landlord, and the landlord says, you can't own a cat. So the cat walks in, and the builder turns, and he points, and he says, is that a cat? <laughs> now, I took a chance. <laughs> I said no, <laughs> and he seemed to be fairly happy with that. <laughs> At one point he said, uh, this burglar then, he says, black was he? Oh, I said, he wasn't black, no. He says, are you sure? <laughs> I said, well, I only saw his face, I've really no idea. <laughs> Another thing that stupid people love to say is they say, well, I wouldn't eat in an Indian restaurant. You don't know what meat you eat in. It's all dog, that's what you eat in. Now, if you were a chef, in an Indian restaurant, and it was up to you to get hold of a week's supply of meat, what are you going to do? Are you going to go down to the butchers and buy some chicken and some lamb? Or are you going to run around the streets late at night <laughs> trying to catch Labradors and a butterfly net? <laughs> so I said, he wasn't black, no. He says, are you sure? He says, because some of them are quite clever, you know. <laughs> Some of them don't look black, but they are. <laughs> Half an hour later, I gave him a bucket of water. He said, what's that? I said, it's a cup of coffee, but some of these cups of coffee are quite clever, you know. 